Sprouts have the benefits of the whole food plant-based diet. Lose weight, gain energy, reduce inflammation, sleep better, become more regular, and think more clearly. A seed is a complete plant organism living in a dormant state. And that you get to play creator. I want to know, is that normal or have I done it wrong? The seeds are a plant organism. I cannot wait to start sprouting all of my other goodies that I've got here. One cup of broccoli sprouts a day would be very good. Doug, it is so great to have you here. I'm so excited to dive in. But before we get started, can you tell us what you had for breakfast this morning? So I had water for breakfast. And that's it because I do a limited feeding window. So my feeding window is between noon and 6 p.m. So for breakfast, I drank a liter of water and I'm in the desert. So then I had about 45 minutes later, I had another liter of water. And then I ran five kilometers um, at 48 degrees Celsius. And wow. So 100 plus 109 degree uh, Fahrenheit. So that's uh, my day today so far. And then you keep drinking water until 12 o'clock? Till 12 o'clock. And mm -hmm. then, I'll, then I'll eat fruit. So right now, watermelon is in season. So I had at least a full half of an organic watermelon with seeds, which is my favorite. It was one of the best watermelons I've had um, all year. So I literally just scoop it out like a little kid, and I just sit there and eat it. And that's what I had for lunch. Beautiful. Sounds delicious. So can you tell us how old you are? I'm 54 years old. Wow. You and look amazing. Thank you. Thank you. But I have to say, when I say 54, 54 is what I think of as a grown-up. And I feel like in my <laughs> childlike, um, you know, fancy life. So it's, I have no idea of age. Like literally, there's just no concept of age. So, but I feel great. But I, so therefore, since I don't care about my age, you know, and I'm not a racist, sexist, um, or ageist, um, or speciesist, I'm happy to share, you know, anything. So feel free to ask me anything, Melissa. Well, I'm so excited to dive in. I really want to dive in and talk to you about sprouts because I think they are very a very simple thing that we can all do that mm. have such a huge uh, impact on our health. But before we go there, I want you to share your story. How did you get here? How did you get to where you are today? Because I love your story and I want you to share it with my audience. Yeah, so my story, and it, it, I'm going to sit back and just relax. You make me feel so you make me feel so comfortable, Melissa. So uh, my story is I was a bad boy, and and I wrote about this a little bit in my book. But I guess I was um, su prescribed glasses when I was like seven or eight years old, but I was insecure, so I never wore my glasses. So I remember putting them on, taking them off, walking down the street thinking that everyone was going to be going four eyes and shaming. So I went through school without my glasses. So as a result, I couldn't see. My grades were terrible. And so I went off on a really bad path and I couldn't get into good schools. And I, what I could do was I could draw and I could paint. So I got into um, the arts. and But the arts then were um, graffiti and subway trains. And so that was fun for me. But then when I turned 17, I could no longer paint on subway trains. I joined the U.S. Army as a paratrooper, which was insane thing to do. And I'll be very candid. I didn't do it from a patriotic point of view. I did it as a selfish point of view because all of my friends were getting into serious trouble. They were going to jail. You know, someone died. Someone was kind of getting into really um, bad activities. And I had watched TV and I believed in the Army College Fund and be all you can be. And I thought like, okay, if I go into the Army, I'll get discipline. 
I'll be able to save my money and then I can move on with my life. And so I got out of the army and I jumped out of planes. I ran through the woods. I built bridges. I blew them up. And the, I got into the, you know, almost the best physical shape of my life because now I'm in better physical shape than I am when I was in the military. But I, it, it really straightened me out at that time and gave me confidence and self esteem. And I'd save some money. But I, I could never get a, like, the concept of sitting in school after I got out of the army where you're totally wild and practically swinging from the trees made no sense for me to go back to school. So I just decided that I was going to work. And so I would do anything that I could to work, whether it was buying and selling baseball cards, working in a restaurant, working in a supermarket, working in uh, as a bus boy. And I was doing all these things and I was making money but it, I didn't feel like I had any purpose, that I was somewhat lost. And it wasn't fun for me to work, but I couldn't not work. So the idea of sitting and watching TV or socializing and having quote unquote fun, I didn't feel worthy of fun. I felt like I needed to work. And then my, uh, one of my mentors, who's now in his late 70s, he said to me, um, well, Doug, you like graffiti. Why don't you go into graphic design? That's a legitimate firm. And my, my life kind of took an interesting toll there where the first book on graphic design I found was by a gentleman by the name of Paul Rand, who happened to have designed IBM, ABC, UPS, Westinghouse. And he was working with um, Steve Jobs on the next computer corporate identity. and. Paul took me under his wing. You could actually Google Doug Evans and Steve Jobs, and you'll see an interview I did with Steve in 1993. And it has 400,000 views on YouTube. And it was a great, great interview with, with the, the man himself about graphic design and his relationship with my mentor. And I worked for this man for seven years without pay. So I was an unpaid intern, apprentice, and had a, it, was like, it was like the karate kid working with a master, and Paul was indeed a master, and he was hard. He, was, he ran the, the graphic design program at Yale University, and when I interviewed with him, I told him the closest I got to Yale was I was eating free hors d'oeuvres in the Yale club <laughs> in Manhattan, and he laughed. But that was an incredible experience. And then I went from working with Paul to then doing computer graphics. And then everything was going great, except my aunt got diabetes and they chopped off her feet below her ankles. And then my uncle got heart disease and he died. And then my aunt, my other aunt, had like IBS and colitis and couldn't really function. And then my uncle got heart disease. Then my mother got stomach cancer and she died. My father got heart disease and he died. And my brother, my older brother, um, became morbidly obese, became morbidly obese, developed type two diabetes, developed atrial fibrillation, the irregular heartbeat, and then had the first of three strokes and a heart attack. So this was me 21 years ago, thinking like, here I am. I'm successful. I'm I'm, everything's going great, and then everyone around me is is dead or dying. And I thought I was 36 pounds heavier because I was making the association between food and a reward system. So the fact that I had money, I could eat out at the nicest steakhouses and Italian restaurants and French restaurants. And so I used my money to buy food which was a status symbol, and that felt good. But then um, I w thought I was genetically cursed. And I met a woman, you know, they say when a student is ready, the teacher will come. I met a woman in New York City who was a vegan. And her name was Denise Mari, and she was the first vegan I ever met. I thought, I never even heard the term vegan. I thought vegan was short for vegetarian. <laughs> and, and she made the distinction and she was very strict. And in a two-week period, I went from eating fast food, street food, processed food, refined food, 
meat, dairy, animal products, and literally any sort of junk, candy, processed things to vegetarian, vegan, and then raw vegan. And that was in 1999. So that was my, in New York City. And we didn't have the term USDA organic certification didn't occur until 2002. So th there were um, no vegan restaurants that I knew of at the time. There was nothing really accessible. So Denise and I were just constantly planning like what we could do to make it easier to live this lifestyle that we were eating. And ultimately, Denise took over my loft and started to run a little community center there. And she was showing movies like, um, oh, what was the movie? Earthlings and different um, movies that were aligned, who killed the electric car. So we were showing movies. We were having potlucks, having people come over and then um, buying and selling various products. And that became Organic Avenue. So in 2002, Denise says, oh, well, we should call it something. And I was like, well, what do you like? And she said, oh, like Sesame Street. And I said, well, what about Organic Avenue? And so we trademarked that. And that was a 10-year journey of creating an all-raw, organic, plant-based, um, low-impact. So we used glass bottles for all of our dry goods that we sold and of our juices, soups, and smoothies. And then we'd collect a $2 deposit and they would come back. So I did that for 10 years. We opened up over 10 stores. And then uh, that's a separate journey, but that was great. And then I went on um, to inventing this machine that I miss dearly called Juicero. I don't know if you ever saw that. It's a beautiful, it's like an espresso machine for cold juice. And it, it, it lived a very short life, five years of my life, but a year commercialized. And it was really misunderstood. And do you, do you have cold pressed juice in Australia? We do, we do, and we and we. You can buy a cold pressed juicer and uh, do it at home yourself. Yeah. So, so I felt that the people who had the cold pressed juicers at home were using them once or twice a week. Oh, I'm sorry, once or twice a month, right? Because they had to buy the produce, wash the produce, make the juice, and then use the juicer. But if people had an espresso machine, they were using it once or twice a day. Like it was just so easy, and I felt that green juice had helped heal me. Like I really believe in unsweetened, cold press greens that anyone can eat a banana, anyone can eat an apple or berries or even oranges. But to try to have massive amounts of dark green leafy vegetables, kale, chard, cilantro, parsley, arugula, that's hard to eat in big amounts. So I felt green juice was a way of getting another serving of fruits and vegetables. But it, it, I look at that, for me, it was a success that we launched a product, we sold thousands of them and over a million servings of produce, but we were way ahead of our time and very misunderstood. So I decided I was gonna take some time to go to the desert and connect with the universe. Like watch every sunrise, watch every sunset, feel the vibrational energy of the vortex, and soak in healing waters of hot springs. So that was my vision. So I found it. I bought a little plot of land and I moved to the desert. And this is where the sprouting journey really um, took off because I'd known about sprouting, just like when we were chatting with your husband earlier. He knew about sprouting. But there were so many other more convenient, more, quote unquote, delicious, accessible foods um, that sprouting was always second tier. It was a garnish. It was something that I'd have on a, on a wrap or a sandwich or maybe sprinkled on a salad. But when I moved to the desert, not only was I in the Mojave Desert, I was in a food desert. So the nearest high quality health food store was over one hour away, hour and 15 minutes with no traffic. So round trip, if I needed to go to the grocery store, it was going to take me 
three or four hours minimum to, to do that. And that's when I was like, no, I'm like falling asleep at the wheel. I'm, you know, I'm right in the sun. And then I said, oh, well, what about sprouts? So I started to grow the sprouts that I knew about, sunflower sprouts, alfalfa sprouts, mung bean sprouts. And within one month, 50% of my calories were coming from sprouts that I was growing in one cubic foot, right? So half a centimeter, or half a meter, cubic meter on the countertop, I'm growing these sprouts and it was easy and I was full, right? So I was eating fruit from the farmer's market and then growing my sprouts and I'm a happy camper and I had my routine. And then I started to add more sprouts and I started to research them. And we had just put internet into um, our little compound here. So I had good internet access and I'm researching. And I tell you, Melissa, the more I research sprouts, the more excited I got about sprouts. It was like fireworks going off in my brain. And I, I literally felt like, you know, I discovered like something incredible, but then my ego and the imposter syndrome and the wounds that I had kept saying, well, no, Doug, you didn't discover anything. Sprouts have been around since the beginning of time. Everyone knows about sprouts. What can you add to the sprouts? So I said, okay. So I bought every book on sprouts and I was like, wow, this is really great information, but this doesn't have the fire in the belly and, and the drive and the information and it's all dated that the books didn't even cover the benefits of, of, of the new knowledge that occurred in the last 20 years about cruciferous vegetables and about glucoraphanin and sulforaphane and myrosinase and the, the subtle things that happen when you sprout. So that's when I said, you know what, even though I'm uncomfortable writing, right? Because the extent of my writing were emails, right? And, and now more text. So I, I never wrote an essay. I didn't go to college. So writing was very, very difficult for me. But the why I should write the book was so powerful and so compelling. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I flew to New York, which was like culture shock for me because I hadn't been there for a while and I grew up there. I visited one publisher and I said, look, um, sprouts, this is the future of food. Sprouts have been around since the beginning of time because there'd be no plant life on the planet without seeds, right? So you need seeds and sprouts are when they germinate. But the insight that I had was that seeds have been around since the beginning of time. Sprouting was one step in the process of germination, but most of the world were, were eating mature fruits and vegetables that took weeks, months, years to grow. And I didn't have weeks or months or years to grow. Like I needed food now. And with six mason jars, I set up a little routine where two tablespoons of broccoli seeds were making six cups of broccoli sprouts. And one cup of broccoli sprouts has 60% of the recommended daily allowance of vitamin C. And because they went from a dark brown seed that looked like a poppy seed into a mature sprout, and it was green and it had leaves on it, it had chlorophyll. And when it starts off as that little protein seed and it grows, it's developing soluble and insoluble fiber. And so that was the, the first level of understanding. I didn't even know about the anti-cancer, cytoprotective, chemoprotective properties of these compounds like glucoraphanin. And then when you chew them, they, they, they release the the enzyme myrosinase to form sulforaphane. I knew nothing about that. I was just thinking about food and having food. And so many magical things happened with sprouts. But I'm going to take a breath. <laughs> I'm going to take a breath now, Melissa. I knew you didn't. I could have gone the entire time, but I'm taking a breath. 
Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Such an incredible story. There's so many things I want to dive into. My husband, Nick, is the sprouter in our house. He is obsessed and he has been diving into it. Um, I think he first discovered you on our friend Simon Hill's podcast. And so you can talk to me like a complete newbie. So just pretend like I am this complete newbie when we get into um, how to sprout and things like that. Uh, but your book has some, an ama- some amazing endorsements from Dr. Oz, Deepak Chopra, Dean Ornish, which congratulations, by the way, they're incredible endorsements. Now, one thing that you say is that after 10 days of sprouting, a reader, once they've read your book, will lose weight, gain energy, reduce inflammation, sleep better, become more regular, and think more clearly. That's pretty exciting stuff. So can you tell us about all the benefits from Sprouts? Yeah. The interesting thing was Sprouts are vegetables. So and they are whole plant-based vegetables. So the fact that we get to leverage, and by the way, Simon Hill, he's a great mate. I love Simon. I love doing the podcast with him. Um, the, the great thing about Sprouts is I believe there's a global consensus that vegetables are good for you. Organic vegetables are good for you, right? Right. We can all agree on that. Like no one can debate this. Like, you know, there's so many other things that you can debate, but no one can debate that vegetables are the best things for you and that we all need to eat them every single day. Yes. Right. So so with that, in the US, they recommend seven to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables daily. So it is imperative to have a wide variety and diversity. As Dr. B writes in Fiber Fueled, you need to have a lot of diversity of fiber into your diet. So so people in America, everyone who's non-vegan and some newbies to vegan will say, Doug, where do you get your protein from? And my response is like, where did you get that question from? <laughs> like, w- like, where do you get your fiber from? And like, I don't feel protein deficient. And I'm sure it's possible to become protein deficient. But I would argue there are more people that are overweight, diabetic, um, inflamed than there are people that are protein deficient. So wh- when we look at like the benefits of sprouts, Sprouts have the benefits of the whole food plant-based diet. And if you eat sprouts, there's all sorts of consistency, like the gelatinous seeds, like the chia, arugula, flax, they have great consistency that you can make puddings, you can make things, but they have fiber and they're alive. The vegetable, garden variety vegetables, the radish, the broccoli, the alfalfa, um, the radish, those are pure fiber, pure antioxidants, vitamin C, super healthy. Then if you look at a cup of lentils, this is a a great thing and I'm refining my dialogue around lentils. But the difference, like lentils are pretty much accepted around the world as a healthy food and a healthy source of protein. If you were to take a half a cup of lentils and you spout them, you get a full cup. Like, voila. Like, they grow in three days because they absorb the water, they germinate, you're triggering the growth, and as they grow, you're increasing the amount of soluble and insoluble fiber. So so anyone who is on a budget or who doesn't want to spend money on organic food, this is revolutionary for them. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you could buy organic lentils by the pound for, if you can translate what two US dollars is, what is that in, um, in, in almost two US dollars is like 
a dollar 1.7 euros and i don't know what it is in australia and pounds but what you you want to translate quick or does everyone know what a dollar is everyone could work it out but i can i can definitely look it up but what you're saying is like when you have like a pound of uh lentils you can literally double it you double it you double the lentil and when you double them you're also doubling the amount of antioxidants so if it's green you're getting the chlorophyll if it's red you're getting the anthocyanidins if it's orange you're getting the beta carotenes so you're doubling the antioxidant and you're tripling the vitamin c minimum triple of the vitamin c and wow and it's alive so you're getting Mm. an enzymatically active um vegetable that when you chew that and you mix it with your saliva you're getting these prebiotics that help the microbiome Can we actually talk about digestion for a minute? Because in your book, you say that sprouts can help with digestion. Now, we've been sprouting for just a couple of weeks now. And taking into consideration different body types and different temperatures, you know, winter and summer, uh, how does sprout affect different digestions? Because for me, when we first started, I got a little bit bloated and I almost resisted sprouts because... Uh, it's winter in Australia at the moment and it was colder and I love warm foods. Like my body just loves them. But uh, I did read that you can lightly steam them if you do want. um, And I'd like to hear your thoughts on that too. But let's talk about digestion. And was it just the fact that I was introducing these new sprouts into my life that maybe that was where the discomfort and the bloating was coming from. Not that something was going wrong. It was just my, my microbiome, like you said, the prebiotics was getting used to it. Yeah, it takes time to get used to it. And it's one of the things like, if you decide to train for a marathon, you don't run you know, 10 kilometers on your first day or you will hurt, right? So I think the idea of adding a little sprouts to your diet also, you know, when you introduce the sprouts to it, be very present with the sprouts. Like pick the sprouts, look at them, marvel at them, and trigger your brain to know that this is the food that's going to help heal you and let the digestion of the sprouts begin with the eyes, right? And then there's no rush. Take the seed, take the sprout, and chew it, and mix it with your saliva, right? So you're getting it ready. And also, if you're, you know, starting off, you can do one of two different strategies, and they work different for different people. One is to have a few sprouts on an empty stomach, so that the microbiome has very clear, like the those probiotics and prebiotics in your stomach, the microbiome will look at this and say, aha, this is something new. Let's figure it out. And there's digestive fluids, right? Like the hydrochloric acids that are in the stomach that'll try to break it down. And then the microbiome will look at the fiber and try to feed off of it. And the, the bloating, you know, is basically the chemical reaction of introducing something foreign into the gut. And I would say if you were to read um, Fiber Fueled, Dr. B's book, um, he goes into a lot of it about diversity of fiber and doing it. The other way is you can take other vegetables that the body is very familiar with and add some sprouts into them and they'll slowly mask through. But if you eat too many sprouts up front and your body's not prepared for it, it it might feel it might feel uncomfortable for a little bit. Mm, yeah, you say um, twenty to thirty times sprouts have twenty to thirty times the nutrients of other vegetables and a hundred times those of meat. So when I read that, I thought, why have I not had these in my life my whole life? Like, I, why are they not in the spotlight? Why are sprouts kind of yeah, not under the spotlight. I, I think because 
when there was universal and ubiquitous access to land, to water, and you had time, you could take the broccoli seed and it would grow into a one kilo broccoli head with a lot of food on it. So, um, and that food was healthy, right? The vegetables, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the arugula, the bok choy, the carrots, all those foods were healthy for you. And so there was a time when people had access to vegetables and fruit and they ate them in the mature state. So the sprouting stage was just this one little weak period between you know, a dry seed, germination, and then going into the ground. So they didn't produce a lot of yield. Like one seed might grow eight to 10 times, but it wasn't a lot. So, so I think that was it. And then if you fast forward um, you know, hundreds or thousands of years, today in the developed world, right, which I don't think it's that developed, but they call it the developed world, but in major cities with dense populations, we don't, most people don't have gardens. They don't know have a green thumb. They don't know anything about gardening. So they're in this convenience culture where they're eating processed food, refined food, meals to go, or they're buying their vegetables and their produce from the market. And from that perspective, um, sprouts in the U.S., there is no national sprout company. There just isn't because sprouts are highly, highly perishable, um, hard to transport. So there are no national sprout companies. You could ship apples around for six months back and forth. Um, you can't do that with sprouts. Sprouts have a very short fuse. So therefore, there are no national sprout companies. And there's no sprout marketing association. So no one's promoting sprouts. And they're not very profitable. Like if you think about the, the lentils um, in the market for $2 a pound, that's not very profitable. So people are thinking about like getting a can of pop that is selling for a dollar where they spend 50 cents on marketing. You know, they take the water from groundwater. They're adding some high fructose corn syrup and some food coloring, and they're making 30 cents of profit from that. You know, when you're dealing with 100% organic vegetables, there's not a lot of profit to be made. So therefore, there's no profit, there's no advertising, there's no marketing, and um, it's not convenient. So, but now this pandemic is making people aware of the need to take control of your food future. and. I don't know. I hope there's not another wave of this, and I hope there's not another pandemic looming out there. But what I could tell you is that I'm stocking up on sprouting seeds and that I feel very safe because I'm off the water grid. So I have water and I have seeds, and I feel very comfortable that I could grow my own food. And my book, which launched, um, I'll show you a picture, a little plug here. My book, The Sprout Book, launched in April. It's now in its third printing. Wow, that's incredible. Congratulations. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. And my entire plan of, of going to bookstores and doing book signings and doing talks was entirely mothballed, right? So I couldn't do any of that. And I had virtually no social following. I had like low single-digit following. But I had a fire in my belly. So I went out to people and one on one, I was doing Instagram lives, I swear, with single digits. Like there might be six people watching the live. And I would just do the live. And then, you know, the audiences would get bigger. And then I did some podcasts and then it grew. And now, like literally, there is a sprouting revolution going on around the world. And it's not about be, whether you're paleo or you're ketogenic or you're functional medicine or you're vegan or you're Weight Watchers. What it's about is that people are realizing that vegetables are good for you. Sprouts are vegetables. Sprouts are low cost. They're easy 
and accessible to grow. And that my message today is you can add sprouts to breakfast, lunch, dinner, to every snack, to every smoothie. You can juice your sprouts. You can eat them. And that if you're eating sprouts, you cannot overeat the sprouts. Like your brain will say, I'm nourished. I've had enough. And, and stop. And because there's so much fiber, that's where the weight loss comes in. You're eating a lot of, a lot of sprouts. Um, you're getting a lot of nutrition, but you're not getting a lot of calories. So that's where I, I, I only recommend you know, 50% of your diet being sprouts, although I may joke around about being a sproutarian, but I do think it's important to get calories and to get good high quality fats, whether it be olives or avocados or seeds and nuts. Especially for women too, with our hormones. Yes. Yes. I know very little about women, but uh, yes. <laughs> you also say that sprouts are cancer fighting and help protect us from cardiovascular disease and pollutants in the environment. How so? Well, for one, they have large amounts of vitamin C. So vitamin C is um, builds healthy immune system. The the reaction, which is what we not which is what we want, especially during this COVID pandemic. Yeah, I'm very careful not to to use you know to talk about that or to give medical or nutritional advice because in in the way I'm a simple guy living in the desert, you know, who's eating sprouts, but. What, what what I did read, and I'm going to give a, a, a shout out to Dr. Jed Fahey at Johns Hopkins University, and Jed was tasked over 20 years ago to find out, they knew that cruciferous vegetables had this compound called glucoraphanin, and they knew that glucoraphanin, um, when it was mixed with an enzyme called myrosinase, formed sulforaphane. And in 2019, there were probably 1,500 papers on the benefits of sulforaphane coming from cruciferous vegetables. I reached out to Dr. Um, Fahey because I really wanted to understand the history of sulforaphane and broccoli sprouts. And what he came up with when he was looking for the variety of broccoli that had the most sulforaphane, it turned out it wasn't the variety, it was the stage. And it came back to the seed had the most of glucoraphanin. And turns out if you crush, juice, bite, or freeze, you would release these two compounds. And the theory behind it is, it is part of the plant's defensive mechanism. So if you have the plant and a pest comes and it bites through, it will mix the glucoraphanin and the myrosinase and they'll form like a little poison and that poison will make the bug go away and the plant stays strong. Well, it turns out that reaction, um, this chemical reaction, is what helps um, protect the body and affects the cancer cells and other things. So I, I, wa I don't want to go too far into detail because it's out of my pay grade. But what I could tell you is when I researched and I spoke to the people who did know, it turns out that um, for cardiovascular disease, for inflammation, for diabetes, for weight loss, for all of these things that if the plant based, we know the whole food plant based diet um, works, right? For, for, for dealing with these. Well, turns out that the, the broccoli sprouts and the other sprouts are a concentrated version of the micronutrients, phytonutrients, and compounds that exist in the mature vegetables. And it turns out that as the, the broccoli sprouts, broccoli seed grows from sprout to microgreen to broccoli, the, it doesn't increase the amount of the sulforaphane. So there is a finite amount in every seed. 
So as the plant gets bigger, the the glucoraphanin and sulforaphane actually get diluted. Now other things form, the vitamin C increases, the fiber increases, so they there's benefits. So the the current jury is recommending to eat mature vegetables and sprouts. And that's how where- much how many sprouts like f- for the average person, how many sprouts a day? You said breakfast, lunch and dinner. How much? Like a cup of sprouts, half a cup? Well, Melissa, I I know I'm very serious, right? And I would love for people to eat sprouts at every meal. Re- realistically, I think the research is about 100 grams or one cup of broccoli sprouts a day would be very good, right? In terms of getting this, growing your own multivitamin, um, you would get a lot with one cup. There's different sprouts have different benefits, like the chia sprouts and the flax sprouts have omega threes in them, so that's really great. the The green peas and the lentils have higher amounts of protein in them. So, so I would think about um, diversity of food, thinking about getting a lot of sprouts, and then looking for windows of where you can add sprouts to the diet of you and your family. I love it. You've definitely inspired me. I feel like I'm now converted to sprouts. My husband will be very, very happy with with this. So for those of you that are listening to this, if you want to see what I'm about to do, um, head over to YouTube and you can watch the video. But right here, I have some sprouts. So here are my sprouts. I've got this one here and we've got some Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm trying not to drop them. We've got some broccoli sprouts and sunflower sprouts right here. Wow. So so these are organic. They're tested for impurities and high germination. And I'll link to where we got them from in the show notes so people can check that out. Now, they're, um, they were soaked overnight and they're washed three times a day. They were kept in a dark place. Now, we are a little bit concerned of these. They've got like they've got a bit of fluff on them. And I want to show you, like, I want to know, is that normal or have I done it wrong? Can you see? Yeah. It's interesting that that fluff in that instance is actually called root hairs. So it's not mold. No, no, that is. Okay. Phew. Cause we were like, we've done it wrong. No, no. Those are root hairs. And basically Mm -hmm. what happens is when you're growing them, like in the jar instance, and you're rinsing them, they're a little confused, right? Because in the ground, the roots would go down looking for water. But now you're yes. rinsing and the water is to the left and to the right and to the up and the down, and that it needs the water to actually grow. So that's, they're a little confused. And those are the root hairs. They're so pretty. And I love what you said before that we need to start the digestion process. And this doesn't doesn't just go for sprouts, but it begins with our eyes and and really admiring them. So I love um, how beautiful they are. So how do we start? Where do we begin? Like, speak to me like I'm a total newbie. And because I know for me, I did think, oh, it's too hard. What if I do it wrong? Like, I don't really know how to do this. And and over here, I've got some broccoli sprouts, broccoli seeds. seeds, Yes. We've got some radish. Wow, daikon radish yet. We've got some purple basil or basil, as you would say. (laughs) Wow, I love the purple. Yeah, we've got watercress, sunflower, and purple radish. So we are really excited to start sprouting. But for someone listening who is like, I have no idea where to start. I'm a little bit overwhelmed. Where do I begin? I think the the first is just know that sprouts are very simple, that the seeds are a plant organism. So a seed is a complete plant organism living in a dormant state and that you get to play creator to work with the seed on taking it from 
the dormant state to germination to food. So it is hard to grow a garden. It is easy to sprout. So it's very easy to sprout. It is literally well, that's great. one, that's two, great three. That's great for anyone. Yeah, mate, that's great for anyone who has tried to grow their own food before or herbs and and not succeeded. Uh, this is kind of like a foolproof way to get loads of nutrients into you. Yeah, well, I grew up in a concrete jungle. So mm -hmm. literally, you know, the first time I saw a real forest, I was like, wow, it was like right out of the movies. So I didn't know. And gardening just wasn't a thing for me. So I never grew anything till I grew sprouts. So I think you have to just understand what the sprout is and what makes the seed so magical is that it contains within it everything that it needs to grow for the first week. The only thing you need to add is water. Like that's clean, un, like not water with chlorine and fluoride, like clean water. I, I would say use the best water you have. But if the only mm -hmm. water you have is tap water, you can use, you can use the, the tap water. I prefer okay. distilled water or spring water. But it's so important not to stand on ceremony and to just say, let's just sprout with what you have. Okay, so that's an important distinction. And in many um, cases, that's all people have. So I really want to make sprouting available um, to, to people. So the next thing is you have water. It is important to get seeds that are organic, that are tested for germ, um, high germination rate and are tested for pathogens. Because like everything in life, there are different grades. The seeds that are sold for sprouting are the highest grade for germination. And if you were taking a seed and you were cooking it, it doesn't really matter whether it germinates or not because you're going to cook it and you're going to eat the minerals and the fiber. But if you want it to sprout, you want the, like the top grade. Do you have any favorite brands online that you would highly recommend? I mean, right now, I buy most of my seeds personally from. Uh, Sprout Man or True Leaf Market. But at, at the end of the day, you know, there's seeds around the world. I, I really like the community and the reviews, and I look at customer service and part. And the, the seeds, I've had so much success, you know, with seeds from all different sorts. And it's much easier today. I will tell you today in 2020 versus Two years ago, the amount of seeds in the market today is 10x, like a, an order of magnitude, 10x, force multiplier, more seeds in market. So to sprout, you have a very fancy um, sprouting setup there. We used to just use a bull mason jar, and then we just recently got these. Yeah, that, that Gefu is a very nice kind of, second generation upgrade from the mason jar. But for all intents and purposes, the, that is a glass jar and there's a screen on the bottom. So the goal of the screen is to keep, could you, could you take off the bottom tray? Just pull off the bottom, turn it upside down. The whole thing, just turn everything there is, up. There's water in there. Oh, there is. Okay. At well, the moment. So I can't tip it upside down. Okay. Well, then we won't well, do that. You can in this one? No, no, there's water in both of them. Okay. Um, that's the difference between you and me, Melissa. I, I, if I were on the camera, I'd just spill the water and, and just tear it open. I'm kind of like a beast <laughs> like that. But that's okay. I, don't think, I think my husband would get very mad if I put water all over our carpet and timber desk. He might get very mad at me, but well, it's you, all good. You guys, I'm in, you know, I'm in, I'm in a yurt, so with a with a dirt floor so i wouldn't even notice so yeah um so at any rate so you take the seeds you add them to the jar you add water and you let them soak and in my book i i cover sprouting in a jar sprouting in a tray sprouting in a bag sprouting with soil sprouting with an unbleached paper towel and then you i can do hessian hessian bags as well can't you yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, the seeds want to sprout. I mean, it's just that simple. 
Mm. Right. The, the seeds want to sprout. It's in there. You know, in, in one of the things, if you think about in nature, like one of the reasons why flowers um, are colorful is because they want the bees, you know, to pollinate them. But they also want other birds to eat the seeds and fly away and then drop the seeds somewhere else so that they can spread. So nature is much smarter than we can ever figure out. So you go, you go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead, please, Melissa. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Nature has got it all figured out. I wanted to know what's the difference between sprouts and shoots? I, I think that people try to create labels for certain things, but generally a shoot is part of a sprout that goes straight up, right? Okay. So you have roots that go down and you've got shoots that go up. When you're doing the sprouting in the jar, it's basically, you know, going in circles and you're getting curly things. So you could take the same broccoli seed and if you were sprouting it on an unbleached paper towel, it would shoot up, right? And the root would go down. Um, but if you did it in a jar, the seed comes off, the shell comes off, and then you have a curly sprout and the leaves still form because these things want to grow. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm curious if you could put one book in the school curriculum of every single high school around the world. Now, besides your book, because I think everyone should read that and especially at that age so that they can, you know, go and start sprouting. Is there one other book that you would suggest and love to see in the school curriculum all over the world? I, I like the book, The Four Agreements. Oh, so good. Right. I like that, that book. Do you know what they are? Uh, it's, I, I can't remember the exact terminology, but being impeccable with your word. Yes, that's the exact terminology, actually. Um, oh, my goodness. They've okay. gone from my head. Can you can you refresh my memory? I, yeah. Um, be impeccable to your word. Always do your best. Yes. Don't take anything personally. And there's another one, which is what is the fourth agreement? Wait, let, let me check. Let me check. Um, let me check. I'll look it up. Here we go. Let's have a look. But how beautiful are they? They are so beautiful. Um, and such beautiful little things that you can just live your life by. I really love it. I'll try and find it. Where, where is it? Here we go. Oh, I can't, I'll, I'll link to it in the show notes and people can go and read the book. It's a short book. It's not long. It's a very easy read and it's incredible. I've actually had um, Don Miguel Reese Jr. So Don Miguel Okay. wrote the book. I had his son uh, on the podcast. So I'll link to that in the show notes as well. Did you find it? I did. I did. It's um, okay. uh, be impeccable to your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Yes. Don't and, make assumptions. And always do your best. So I think if, I we, love them. if we can get that into the school curriculum, you know, and no one takes things personally and people are doing their best and they're not assuming things. And they're operating in integrity, right? And being impeccable to work. I think that would be a great foundation. And understanding why um, would, would also be really helpful. I love it. I totally agree. It's such an incredible book. And I want everyone to go and read it if they haven't already. Now, at the very start of our conversation, you shared with us a little bit about your routine. And the fact that you, you know, you have this condensed eating window. Can you talk to us about some of your other morning routines and rituals that really set you up for success? Do you meditate? Do you move your body? Um, tell us about what you usually eat for lunch and dinner. Kind of walk us through a typical day in your life and all of your little rituals and routines you do. Sure. So I get up and then the first thing I have some chores that I need to do kind of around the house and around. So I make my bed. Um, I pull the vacuum out of the hot springs natural pool. And then um, I drink my water. I put on my, um, my backpack 
and then I walk out and I'll do, I have a yoga practice where I do the primary series of Ashtanga yoga. Um, sometimes I will do the whole series. Um, more accurately, I'll do minimum Surya Namaskara A and B. So sun salutation A and B, and then I'm done. And then I will go on and run five kilometers or 10 kilometers to just get it out of the way. I don't like running, wow. but I just bang it out. And I do that seven days a week. I don't even get winded on it. Um, and I'll either listen to a podcast or listen to a book on tape, or more than likely I'm making phone calls. So I'm already like in my rows of the work. And then I come back, I take a shower, and then I soak um, as much time as I have before my next kind of critical activity. I'll soak and I have a beautiful um, 5,000 pound granite um, tub that I fill with hot springs water on demand. So that's an incredible part. And I shower before I go in there and then I'll sit and being impeccable to my word, I'll be on the phone a lot, you know, while I'm soaking and it's a really nice thing. But then the sun starts to come up and it's in, in there. So I get back out into the shade and then I'm, you know, I'm juggling. So I'm doing podcasts and Instagram lives and posting and researching. And then I make my way into the lab and I'm nurturing sprouts. So I always have many different sprouts going in different stages and looking at the results and looking at the root hairs. I was like experimenting. And if you see my last post on Instagram, I was experimenting to see how I could get the most root hairs right? Because I want to get a, a like a, a beautiful shot of the of the root hairs. So I think I have the photo of that I posted yesterday of the most root hairs. And we'll link to we'll link to it in the show notes so people can see. Yeah, thank you. And so so then I, I do a lot with sprouts. I'm on the phone. I'm pretty isolated um, here. But um, my my girlfriend lives out here. We have occasional visitors. Um, so I'm I'm hustling. Um, on that. And then, you know, around noon, you know, in the summer now, I'll eat my half a watermelon, which is like a full size watermelon. I'll eat half. It was a small size watermelon. I'd eat the whole thing. And then a couple of hours later, I like to eat a whole or half of an aloe leaf. So I really like the fresh aloe leaf. I fillet it. I take off the greens. I just love it. Super good for digestion, good for the skin good for the desert. So it helps me um, kind of hold my water. I just love everything about um, aloe. We grow it. I'm here, um, but I'll also buy it. And then later on the day, I'll start to, you know, eat handfuls of sprouts. Usually, you know, I'll eat like an eight ounce serving handful of broccoli sprouts and just, you know, mow through it almost like I had a lawnmower and just... <laughs> you know, like they're just so familiar with me, I can eat them. And then I'll eat some more different sprouts. And then my girlfriend makes this beautiful gourmet um, vegan dinner, um, almost, you know, seven nights a week, six nights a week, one night, we may go to town and, and eat um, in COVID outside, or we'll picnic and go to the park. And that's like my and so my my goal is, no salt, oil, or sugar, um, whole food, plant-based. And then um, right now I'm really into dates. So I can eat, mm. you know, 10, 15, 20 medjool dates. And they've got great mm. potassium. They've got great sugar, um, great fiber. And I'm pretty regular. So um, I think the dates and the watermelon and the fruits, and I'm certainly getting a lot of fiber. And and that's like my, my day. and um, we like to meditate. We don't meditate enough. I've done two 10 day Vipassana meditations. So you no know, reading, writing, speaking, eye contact. And I like to do a sit, um, once or twice a day of, um, usually as little as 10 minutes. I would prefer to do an hour. I rarely do an hour, maybe on a Saturday when it's really peaceful, I'll sit for an hour, but otherwise I'll struggle through to do 20 minutes. Wow. Sounds like a beautiful, beautiful day. And then what time do you usually go to bed? We like to be in bed 
by 10 o'clock. We probably don't go to sleep until midnight. I use the Aura Ring, and they're, they're not sponsoring me. And then I use um, Sleep Cycle. Um, have you seen the Sleep Cycle app? Yeah, my husband has an Aura Ring. Yeah, well, this this is actually a free app also on the Sleep Cycle. Um, so you can look at my sleep quality. It varies. Oh, wow. <laughs> so some nights I'll get eight hours and some nights I'll get four. So it really mm-hmm. depends like what, what's going on, on on the day and the night. So, but it almost like I know that sleep is good and I want to rest, um, but I like activity. I like to do things. Mm, oh, definitely. Um, and when I can, we have a nice um, lap pool. So if we get done early, you know, we might take a break and do some laps in the pool and we soak together and watch the stars. I posted two posts ago, we had a comet, the Neowise comet, and we could see the comet like from our driveway, like wow. that powerful. Oh, that's amazing. I'm definitely going to go and stalk your Instagram after this and look at all of these incredible things. I would love to chat to you now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I actually have three rapid fire questions for you now. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, they say in the military, never ready, always prepared. So I'm prepared for your questions. Great. What is one thing that we can all do today for our health? I think I know what you're going to say. Eat sprouts. Eat sprouts. Exactly. What's one thing we can do for more wealth in our life? So more abundance in all areas of our life meditate. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And what's one thing that we can do today for more love in our life? Be love. Beautiful. I love that. There's another book that um, I read. uh, It's a sales book called The Greatest Salesman in the World. And there was a chapter on love. And it says, I'll greet this day with love in my heart. For this is the greatest secret of success in all ventures. And there's one part as it goes through, I could recite the entire chapter for you um, if you wanted to. But it, it, later on in the chapter, it says, and how will I confront each whom I meet? In only one way, in silence and to myself, I will address them and say, I love you. Oh, wow. What was the name of the book? I'm going to link to it in the show notes. Yeah, the Greatest Salesman in the World. Wow, that sounds beautiful. Oh, it's really beautiful. And there's a chapter on persistence that is also in my DNA. Like it is in my DNA. I memorized that chapter too. Wow, that's incredible. I'm definitely going to read that. So thank you for that little recommendation. Is there anything else that you want to share with us? You have shared so much information. Is there any last parting words of wisdom or anything that you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to chat about yet? I think the the thing is that right now we're living in crazy times, right? And the reality is we have always been living in crazy times. Like always, there's always something going on. So it's important to master equanimity and to know that whatever is going on in the world, like have your intention of what is important to you and then take optimistic, affirmative action in order to achieve that. And it's really important sometimes to put blinders on so that you can stay focused on the goal. So like my goal is to get a billion people eating sprouts. Like that's my definite purpose. So when people start to talk about politics or, or baseball or, you know, um, even like the, the C word that you said before, like in a way I, I kind of put my blinders up and in the most polite way, I ask myself, is this information going to help me achieve my definite purpose in life and my goals, or is it a distraction? And most things are a distraction. So I'm like staying, you know, keeping my eyes on the prize. 
I love that. Yes, yeah, stay in your lane. And I love that you've got a big goal, a big vision, and I definitely see it happening. So I'm excited. I'm converted. I'm going to be a sprouter. So thank you for all of your wisdom and sharing with us. I love how much you care about sprouts and how much you care about helping people get healthier and happier. You serve so many people with your book, with your Instagram, with everything that you're putting out there, all the podcasts and the lives and everything that you're doing. So I want to know how can I give back to you? How can myself and the listeners serve you and give back to you? Because you are giving to so many other people. How can we give back to you? You know, that's probably a wound that I have that I don't like to ask for things for myself. Like, so I would say, um, buy my book and write a nice review on Amazon. Um, you know, follow me on Instagram, engage in the comments and send me your sprouting success. Like I want to see the pictures of your sprouts, of your success, of your transformations so that I feel like, you know, I'm not just, you know, treading water, but I'm swimming towards my goal. Mm, beautiful. We'll definitely do that. And we'll link to everything in the show notes. Doug, this has been incredible. I have learned so much and I cannot wait to start sprouting all of my other goodies that I've got here. So thank you so much for being here, for sharing with us and for all your words and wisdom today. Oh, my pleasure, Melissa. The fact that you're doing this and you're serving so much and you reached out to me um it, it's like the law of attraction like i feel that my work um to attract you to invite me onto your platform um is is just beautiful because that that's the way like i believe in attraction not promotion so that was just beautiful so thank you for your work i was so excited to be on your on your podcast. I told you, I just got off the phone with my friends in Sydney. Um, so Philip, David and Richard, um, they've got an industrial design firm, Alchemy in Sydney. And they, they're just ter tremendous. And I literally went from that call, one minute later, I just jumped onto the call with you. Lots of Aussies around you today, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you so much, Doug.